Welcome to the Dr. Tom Show. Today, I am really excited to have one of my favorite people, not only in the profession, but on a planet Earth, joining me today uh, for the show. He graduated from the Cleveland College of Chiropractic in 1994. And get this, he's the founder and past president of the Oklahoma Chiropractic Association. He's the founder and president of Focus OKC Seminars, which if you have not been out to Oklahoma for Focus OKC, make sure you do that uh, next year, if not at one point in your life. He's the founder and president of Focus Foundations, which teaches chiropractors all around the world. He travels the world teaching chiropractic mastery with his focus on the adjustment and connection with the patient, which we're going to delve into a little bit today. And that's as well as having one of the busiest practices in the United States, uh, maintaining a nice balance with his family, which I know to be true because I see him and his wife together, and it really is quite an inspiration uh, to me. And his mission is really to serve his community, his patients, and the profession with love, compassion, and gratitude. Dr. Tim Young, welcome to the show. Thank you ever so much for joining us today. Um, I'm so honored, Tom. This is, I've been looking forward to this, uh, this conversation for a long time. You're, you're one of my favorite people on the planet, so thank you for having me. Well, I think we're going to have a great conversation. I think we're going to be honest. I think we're going to be open with people. Um, you, we had a little chat before the show in terms of where the profession is. And I know you hold such a huge vision for the profession, which I do see potential and coming true. But it all comes down to, and you call it the foundations, it all comes down to focusing on the adjustment and connecting with the people. Why is that so important to a chiropractor? And then we're going to talk about maybe life in general. But why is it so important to a chiropractor to be focusing on the adjustment um, and connecting with their people? So, Tommy, let's, let's, let's look at this for a second. And I want everybody listening to this, all chiropractors, I want you guys to think about something. Let's go back to 1895. Let's go back to the very first chiropractic adjustment ever. Um, the painting behind me, that, is, that was um, commissioned by Frank Arnold. That was the first adjustment. Um, and then if you look, I'll move out of the way, and there's a brick. The brick that's in the case <clears throat> underneath the painting, that brick is from the building where the very first adjustment was delivered. Wow. So I, I, every morning that I get up and I come into my office, that's what I look at. And I want you guys to think about something. So the first adjustment, um, it was a dynamic movement. And then Harvey Lillard's hearing came back. And from that, uh, a science and a, and a profession was born. But I want you to think about if you were the very first, let's just say 100 chiropractors ever, and you went out into the world, out into the public, and said, I am a chiropractor. This is what I do. Could you imagine the feedback or the response? <laughs> because the world has never even heard of the word chiropractic. It, it knew nothing like we know today. And so these chiropractors, they had to go out and explain um, to a very naive or, or you know, ignorant company because this was never heard of, right? And so what were they, what were they going to do? What, so they're going to say, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to do what? I'm going to adjust. And you can imagine if you were the first person to be adjusted, like you're going to do what to my wear? Um, I don't think so. And, you know, and you've got to think about their technique back then, you know, compared to what we know today, it had to be very, very um, rudimentary, right? It was, it, you know, but they were, but the, the difference is when you study your chiropractic history, Ah, the focus, everything they did was focused so intensely on the, on the, on the connection with, with their intention, with their line of drive, with their hand speed, everything, everything was the adjustment. Now there was a, our, 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 our principles and our philosophy is why we adjust, but then you've got to be able to deliver on that because here's the thing, had they not delivered, you think about this, Tom, if they not delivered in a big way, you and I wouldn't be having this conversation today. There would be no profession. And the only reason we're here today is because the chiropractors that came before us, the first generation, the second generation, the third generation, the reason that we get to call ourselves chiropractor is because of their focus and connection on the adjustment. Because without it, there's no profession. And so I look at that as like, well, if it, if it created us and, and brought us to this point, why is it that we're not focusing on the same thing that got us here? Because if you think about it, it's one of the things that they're trying to water down and take away from us. And so to me, as a chiropractor, and after 27 years of practice and, 
you know, guys, the practices we have, you know, to this day, we're con- I'm having my, I'm having the best year I've ever had in 27 years. And the only thing I do is, is just, just zone in, focus in on that specific, intentional, passionate adjustment. I see it. I feel it. I trust it. And I understand that when I make that adjustment, what's going to happen in that body and tell me what's happening is we're, we're losing that. The, um, the world is so caught up in, in marketing and, and, and Facebook ads and all that and, and trying to generate, drive more patients to your practice. Well, that's fine. But if you have nothing to deliver, if you have nothing for them to come and, and accept, then they're not going to stay because what you're doing is selling empty promises. You know, when foundations and you've been there, you know what kind of how I do things. We have a, a very basic philosophy. Speak the truth, deliver on the truth. Mm. But if you have nothing to deliver, they're not going to come back. Your practice is not going to grow. And chiropractic will not survive without delivering on the truth. And that's what, to me, is the chiropractic adjustment. The chiropractic adjustment is the truth. You can't deny it. And and you think about, you know, what chiropractic is. It is not functional medicine. It is not nutrition. It is not manipulation. It's not. And, and, and if you tr- try to say that it is, then you've never, ever paid attention to where we come from. You know, I, I, we laugh. It's my, my favorite, one of my favorite jokes had, had D.D. Palmer given Harvey Lillard a banana instead of a chiropractic adjustment, <laughs> we wouldn't have a profession, right? You know, we, we, we have to, tell me, we have to focus on that. And the connection, here's the thing, I talk about connection with patients all the time. The way you connect is you love them so much that you work tirelessly on becoming a master at your technique. You know, my, my hero, my teacher, Dr. Hugo Gibson, uh, this is what he said to me several years ago, and I, and I live by these words today. Your chiropractic adjustment is your signature. It defines who you are as a chiropractor. And, and to me, that's the most powerful thing. And, and, and that's what I talked about at Focus this year. And, and it, it's so important. It is so important that, we, de- that, that we, we define ourselves as a chiropractor by what we use our hands with. So, so true. And there's so many bits in there I want to unpick, but it was, what was really interesting, you talked about the, the focusing on outside to draw people into the practice and, and the way to, to love on people is to focus on getting your service better. And it's almost like we have this inside out principle in chiropractic, but it's almost not being used within the person running their practice themselves. So they, Absolutely. they fear their skills. They don't feel they're good enough. So they look for something outside to improve it. But all they're looking for is someone to bring them patients as opposed to doing the work inside to develop their, their adjustments and their skills. You know what? That's interesting. You said that because I use that analogy all the time. Chiropractic prides itself. You hear chiropractors, you know, say this mantra chiropractic is, 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 you know, focused on above down inside out. That's how we heal because medicine fails because it's an outside in type of uh, paradigm. But that's how you build your practice. It's the exact same way. It's from the inside out. Above down is our principle. Above down is our philosophy. We understand that there is a universal intelligence that is in control of everything, everything. And it universal intelligence expresses itself through each individual human being. Anything that's alive, it ex, it's an expression we call innate. That's the subtle power that we work with. And, and so we understand that. And we proclaim that and that's what makes us chiropractors but yet we go into our practices and we don't work from the inside out we work from the outside in and we wonder why it doesn't work because it's a contradiction it's a contradiction in 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 what we say and profess and how we practice and act those things are a contradiction and you have to align those exactly what you said is beautiful well i, I it's something i teach you see often enough like you go anywhere you go and buy a new car and you get sold this car by the salesman but then the team that actually is the operating team and gives you the car and runs the maintenance of it doesn't match up to what the salesman said. And then you have a huge mismatch between the sales and the service. And it's the same, like you said, in chiropractic, you're promising this and delivering that. Um, and I suppose, we, you know, we're not trying to, you know, rip on people and, and, and tell them that they're not doing good enough, but show them where they can start to do better. Um, and you said one thing about focusing and connecting, like you see, an extraordinary volume of people in your practice, which is so inspiring. How do you focus on every individual? Like, how can you, if someone asks you, like, and they're not seeing the numbers you're seeing, but they are struggling with their focus. 
to deliver that adjustment, to trust the innate intelligence that comes through them, how could they choose to focus better? What could they do or think of, or, or do you have any tips for them on that? Absolutely. You know, and I had, a, I had a conversation with a young doctor yesterday about this very thing. You know, one of the biggest things that we need to understand is that we are not responsible for their healing. We are not responsible for their, their how long it took to get the office or how much money they make. We're not responsible, you know, for their health conditions. We're not responsible for any of that. And what happens is the chiropractors, they, for whatever reason, and we're kind of taught this in school, it's a mechanistic approach that we are responsible. That's why, that's why there's so many therapies and this and that. We're not responsible for that. We are responsible to deliver a specific intentional adjustment into the area of the spine that is not moving appropriately. That lack of motion is what's causing stress on the joint, which is stress on the tissue, which then neurologically affects the body. So our job is to restore proper motion, maintain motion long enough to allow the body the potential to heal. That's what we do. So the way I focus in my practice is I understand that. I understand my job and what it is I was called to do, and that's make the adjustment. So we made a comment said, how do we stay focused on the person? We're not focused on the person. We're focused on the adjustment. The per because we, you think about it. I saw, so Wednesday, this past Wednesday, in three hours, I saw 101 people um, with three new ones and like three reported findings. I did that in three hours. And then I had a little bit of downtime, right? I had a little bit of downtime in that because I, um, I had actually a young doctor, a, uh, a young student and his wife observing, and I got to even talk to them in all that time. And so some people like, there's no way you can give good quality of care to all those people in that short of time. Well, here's the difference. What everyone else is doing is they're trying to give good quality of care to every individual personality. They're trying to listen to everything they got to say and, and, and all they're doing in their lives and how they hurt and what they feel. That's not my responsibility. That's not why people get in their car and drive sometimes three, four hours one way to see me. They come to their chiropractor, which is me. They come to see me for one reason or one reason only. First of all, I love them and care about them enough and respect them enough to deliver what they come for. And that's an adjustment. I'm not going to waste their time. I'm not going to talk about things that are irrelevant. I'm not going to do things that are relevant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to deliver the number one thing that gets the greatest effect by doing that, it removes everything else that I, that I could do that just gets side effects. And that's what most chiropractors do. They use words and actions and procedures to just to get tiny side effects. I'm delivering the number one thing that's going to get the greatest effect, and that's the adjustment. And that's what they come to understand. And so for me, the greatest respect, the greatest connection is to say the see to it that I'm not concerned with all the other things. This is how you connect because you stay focused on your art. You stay focused on your art. It's like if I'm a musician, Tommy, and I'm playing a song and, and I've got a crowd, I've got an audience. Well, halfway through the song, I'm not going to lose connection. I'm not going to lose my focus and, and start playing another song, right? I'm going to finish the song before I go to the next one. You have to stay in the moment with the art and with the music that you're producing. And when I'm with a patient, I tell, my, I tell my doctors all the time, listen to the song, be connected to your audience, deliver your art. That's what you're focused on is your art. So I, when, they, when they lay on my table, I remove all distractions, all thoughts, all actions, and I am seeing the adjustment. I feel the adjustment and I trust the adjustment mm. before I ever deliver the adjustment. And when you do that every single time, and it, and, it, and it takes discipline. That's what separates the masters from the amateurs, right? Mm -hmm. and, as we, and, I, and I've used this analogy for years. We have, a, we have a profession full of finger painters trying to sell their art like it's a Rembrandt. And it's not going to hold water, man. You've got to become a master. And that takes time and practice. And to this day, after all the uh, adjustments I've delivered and, and, and all the things I've taught and, and I'm still practicing, still know I've got so far to go. And so that's the difference is most chiropractors, what they're doing is they're concerned with when people come in, what do they think? You know, how, how are they going to think about me? Or how are they thinking? You know, you know, how are they? Man, you can't do that because that's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to restore proper motion with a specific artful chiropractic adjustment and then get out of the way and let NA take over. If, you, if they will learn to do that, everything else takes care of itself. It's brilliant. There's a couple of things that come to mind. You're, you're so right. And it just, something just tweaked there in my mind. It's uh, philosophy, art, and science of things natural, chiropractic, philosophy, science, and art of things natural. And 
you can think of it in the way you just spoke about when you're with a patient. First of all, that philosophy in your mind, you know, you have the certainty. Then the art comes through what you do, that, that, that adjustment. And then the science takes place inside that patient with their innate intelligence. Yes. And I think chiropractors are getting it wrong. They're like kind of uncertain on their philosophy. So then science comes in between their philosophy and their adjustment. And it just doesn't, it doesn't come to. It doesn't deliver. Um, no, you, you tell me. And here's what here's what's happening. You're absolutely right. You you nailed it. There's no there's no certainty in the philosophy or the art. So what they're doing is they're it's chiropractors using the science to try to convince and talk their patient into believing that what they did was okay. It was right. Yeah. Without and, and see, and I don't have to do that. I don't have to convince them. I, I don't educate any of my patients. I tell them, here's your problem. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I need to see. I allow innate to do the educating for me because internally, if the internally, if the inside of the body tells a patient, this is right, there's no argument. There's no, there's no contradiction. There is no gray area. There's no debate. It's right. But what happens is if I don't have the certainty, if I don't have my art, if I don't deliver, well, then nothing really happened. So now I got to try to convince them. It's kind of like you said with a car, you know, you got a car salesman that knows nothing about this car. If the car's really not that great. You know, but you're going to but you're going to really try to sell it on all the science behind the car. But when you get into it, it just doesn't hold water. And, and that's that's where the contradiction. You're absolutely right. You nailed it. That's exactly what happened. The science. That's why the schools spend so much time teaching the science and l almost nothing on philosophy and, and the art, because the people who are teaching, they don't know. They don't know how to adjust. They don't understand the philosophy. They were never taught. They never learned it. They just have a job to get somebody through school. So the only thing they know is what they read in a book and what they can test on. Well, that's just freaking science. But when you get out in the real world, people don't care. They don't care about the science. They don't give a damn about the research. They don't care about evidence. What they care about is how they feel on the inside when they leave your office. Mm -hmm. That's what separates the big practices um, from everybody else. That's You nailed it right there. Yeah, and it's, you know, you wouldn't have a big practice if you weren't delivering. And it's really interesting. You said something earlier as well. Like people look at you, Tim, and you, you've you been in practice for, for years and you you lead the profession and people look at you and go, wow, he's he's got there. He's done it. He's he's the best. He's crafted it. He's figured it out. But you said a minute ago that you, you've still got a lot to learn. And then you talked about the finger painters. And it's interesting. I was listening to something uh, yesterday. Uh, this lady who, who worked with, selling a product to cardiologists and she said if she got in a room full of like the b grade cardiologists the, the second tier cardiologists and showed them videos of other people doing things they'd go oh that's stupid i wouldn't do it that way i disagree with it and then if she showed the video to the a grade cardiologists the best in the world they'd look at it and go well that's interesting maybe i should try it that way maybe i should have a go at doing this and it just shows that as you as you progress and the better you get, the more you've got to learn. And I think there is um, an arrogance at a level in our profession, and maybe it's not the fault of the chiropractors, but maybe the institutions that are that are putting chiropractors out thinking they're better than they are and losing that willingness to learn. Um, and if someone is that and they hear what what you've just said and what I've just said and think, okay, now I need to learn. What, what advice would you have for them? Where should they start? What should they do to really reignite their fire for chiropractic and then get on that journey of really owning their philosophy? Well, you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll answer that, but you, you said something that kind of, remi you know, um, to your point. I want to I address you to your point. Um, this past weekend, we had focus here in Oklahoma City. We had our big focus event that you've been to. And, 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 um, and I, t I always teach an adjusting course for doctors on Thursday before the event. Well, you know, and everybody knows Billy DeMoss, right? You know, everybody knows Billy. And he's one of my closest friends in chiropractic. Well, Billy's been in practice, gosh, uh, probably almost 10 years longer than I have. He came to my adjusting class. And, you know, and, and, and I have to admit that, you know, he, it was, I wasn't intimidated, but it was a little interesting because he's somebody I look up to. He's been in practice a lot longer. Um, but he came and he was, he come, he pulled me aside. He said he was blown away. He learned so much. And he did a post and he used this analogy. And I never really knew this before, but um, he was talking about Ozzy Osbourne. And back when Ozzy was touring at one time, Randy Rhodes was his lead guitarist. And if anybody knows anything about music or rock and roll, Randy Rhodes is a, uh, 
a guitar god. He was one of the best we ever had before we lost him. Randy Rose was the epitome of master. But what I didn't know, and this is what uh, Billy was talking about, is when they would go on tour, every city that they would go to, Randy would search out the best guitar uh, instructor or teacher or artist in that city and spend time with them. He's, because in his world, he would always learn something new. And, 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 and as good as he was, as masterful as he was, he knew that he, there was always room to grow. There was always room to learn. And that's what a true master does. One of my teachers and mentors, Dr. Richard Yenny, um, he practiced for 62 years. He, this guy, I, I could spend the, for three hours talking about what a, he was one of the true healers that I ever met. Um, he was a Qigong master, acupuncture master, chiropractic master, taekwondo master. This man had kings, queens, presidents, movie stars, Chuck Norris. Um, everybody in the world would fly to Kansas City to spend a moment with Master Yinny. This He was that guy, right? And I, he was my teacher and my friend. And the, one of the things he really said to me that I'll never forget, and I looked up to him as like a, a, a healing god. And he was so humble that he always said he so a true master understands that to remain the student is how you become the master the masters reverse that when you become to a point when you know so much you realize you have so much more to learn that's where the mastery comes in and so to your question you know where do you find us it, you know it's out there you but you have to search for it it's like you know, I've got all my green books above me here and I will pull a green book down and I will just open it and I will let that sink in. I will go to adjusting courses. I will, um, there's online stuff. I got all kinds of stuff online. Like my program, I, I put videos of, of adjusting technique all through that. Um, back when the world opens up, I'll be back. I'll come, I'll be at the UK. I'll be doing adjusting classes. You guys um, search out people search out guys like you if listen um, chiropractors in the uk if you're watching this tommy waller is a master uh, benny matthew is a master ryan raider is a master look for sorry botrist sorry is an unhidden gym down in exeter go find him pull him aside he'll 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 share what he's doing uh, michael mason rebecca mason they're out there um, mike paul mike paul my goodness up there in wigan he is absolutely blowing up. So you've got chiropractors all throughout the UK that have taken chiropractic to a level that most can't understand. This is what everyone needs to understand. And you gave me a great um, uh, acknowledgments and, 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 and recognition, but, and I'm, I'm just a humble servant. I am no different than any other chiropractor on this planet. I, I put my shoes on one at a time. I, I go and I adjust my patients. I, I, I'm married. I got kids. I got grandkids. I just, I'm just, a, I'm just a guy that loves chiropractic. But the reason I've gotten to the level that I've gotten to, because I refuse to accept that good enough is good enough. It's not. It's not good enough. If my mother is, is where she lives, like you know, five hours away, if she is going to go get a chiropractic adjustment, I want her to get the very best there is. I don't want her to go to anyone's just half ass. And you sh and everybody listening to this should think about this. When people come to see you, they want you want to deliver the best chiropractic adjustment there is, not an okay or a so-so. You don't good enough is never good enough. And it never stops. That's another thing, too. You guys, everybody has to understand it never quits. So the way you find it is you search for it. You get online, you go to YouTube, you look at videos, and you find chiropractic teachers, you find mentors, you go search. I still do. You know, my teacher, Dr. Gibson, who I quoted earlier. He does it every time I'm teaching an adjust and I've been teaching for years. He walks into my adjusting class and I immediately feel like a little boy, you know, he's almost 80 years old and he just sits down and I'm like, Oh, I'm so intimidated because I, I realize that the man has taught me so much, but that this re it reinforces how much more I've got to learn. You have to search. you got to want to learn, you know, you've got to want to do those things. Just like Randy Rhodes, you know, go to other cities, find other chiropractors, look for somebody that's doing what you inspire to do and ask and learn. And that's that's what I think you should do, Tom. I, I completely agree. And I was just, I was watching you in awe then when you were speaking and you, and, and then you mentioned I've got kids and I've got grandkids. And that made me think this actually, good enough is not good enough, is not just in chiropractic for you and for the people who are super successful, is in every facet of their life. You are one Absolutely. of the most athletic, fit, 
gentleman in the profession. I was, you know, we had John Minardi on the show last week and he's, he's very similar. Like yeah. you cannot. John, John's one of my closest friends. He's amazing. And you can't, and it just shows you can't be great just in one area of your life. If you're going to be great, you have, it has to come through in everything, your fitness, your family, your love, your relationships, your spirituality, as well as your practice. Um, and I just wanted to, to give you credit for that. Um, probably the, the most buff granddad in, in the profession, I'm going to say. <laughs> but Well, you know what, Tommy, and you're right. And here's what, and this is what, this is one of the things that I, when I'm working with chiropractors, when I'm, and I'm coaching with them, or I'm trying to help them through life, you know, I, the first thing that I start with is your personal philosophy. And you know, the way I look at this is if you look in the mirror, that person you look at, I don't care who you are, a student, a female chiropractor, a male chiropractor, I don't care what town, I don't care what part of the world. When you look in the mirror, when that person you're looking at, you have got to love them, respect them, care about them, trust them. You have to own that in it because if you don't, if you don't have that personal relationship with you, you can't expect to have that with anyone else. If you don't trust the person you look at, then you can't expect your patients to trust you, your wife, your spouse, your kids. I mean, it starts with you. It just has to. And when you have that personal relationship, like, yeah, th th I trust this person. I know this person's going to work hard. They're honest. They're, they have an integrity. They care. They love. They're going to see to it that their art is, is going to improve. And when you walk with that certainty, then it translates into your, your, your spouse, which is my number one relationship in the world is with my wife is everything. I mean, daily. There's never a day that goes by that she doesn't understand how important. I mean, We've been married 25 years this past Monday, and never have we missed a week in 25 years, at least once, a lot of times now, two or three times, we go on date night every week. I date her like I just met her, because that relationship then now translates into everything else. And when you have the discipline of making sure that your life is not just good enough, it's never just good enough, and everything translates, your practice, and then your financial stability, and and just your love life and then your, your everything, like you said, Tommy, and, and your physical fitness. You know, I, I was a competitive bodybuilder for years and I can't do that anymore, but I'll be damned if I'm just going to give up. Now my wife's got me running a freaking marathon. <laughs> I'm running a half. I'm not running a full, but, um, but you know, we're constantly, we're, we're, we're skiing, we're scuba diving, we're hiking, we're cycling, we're running, we're playing tennis, we're playing golf, um, living life to the fullest. And that's what all chiropractors should do because it's not just good enough to go through life good enough. No, man, you got to go all out. And when you take that same mentality and that same passion into your practice and like, man, these people that are going to come see me today, they're not just going to get good enough. They're going to get great because that's what they deserve. And that's when your life transforms and turns around. And that's, that's the level of congruency there. That's the, that's the only at first. And, and like you say, you don't need to educate your patients because there's this, this unspoken resonance, this frequency, this vibration between you. Uh, and you talk about there about enjoying yourself and you think of rule number nine, you know, don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. And then I think of Fred Barge in saying um, he heals in the doctor who he trusts the most of it, for paraphrasing his sentence, you know, and you've taken it a step further. Like you've got to trust yourself first and then Absolutely. your patients will trust that. And then it will come through energetically and we've, we've spoken a lot about the adjustment and refining that and getting better at that. The other thing that you're really cognizant of and, and really passionate about is connection. And connection, I believe, is something that the, the world is like, I, I think chiropractors are going to go into a beautiful space right now. I think they're going to go into the most beautiful few years because human beings crave connection. And with connection being Absolutely. taken away from every i mean i've got a patient who's just set up a restaurant and he's not getting waiting staff because he's got computers and uh, robots and the robots are going to serve at the tables you know connections yeah. going from everywhere in life and chiropractors have got the ability to to bring that back to the community so talk to me about connection and and, and how important it is and how you can cultivate that well you know so to your point you know last year 2020 obviously was hard on everybody and it, and it was harder on um, some communities more than others, you know, fortunately here in the United States, um, you know, we had it tough, but in here in Oklahoma, um, we, you know, just because of the, the government and the way it's ran, we, we were pretty good. You know, we, we were shut down for a short period of time, but it still affected everybody, you know, and, and the media and the fear mongering and all that had everybody in a panic. 
But what's crazy is in my practice, we had, we still had a record year in 2020. The best year we ever had in 2021 is even beating that. Well, how is that even possible? Because just like you said, general people, people are craving connection. They don't want to be masked. They don't want to be pushed away. They want to be held. They want to be touched. Even, even the fearful people still innately crave that connection with another human being. And so connection to me starts with, again, just like I said, it starts with you first. And when you're, when you are connected to who you are as a human being and understand who you are, what you do and why you do it, then for me, then what that does, that translates to how you treat another person. And it's not only, the, it's, but it's here, Tommy, there's the most important thing about this. When you're going to connect with somebody, it's not the words or the actions that you, that you, it's not the words you say or the actions that you deliver. It's the intention behind those words and actions. And that's an inside job. That is a, the only way I can exp explain this is I truly, genuinely, with every fiber of my soul, love other people with, with unconditionally. I don't, I don't care um, what color they are, or what country they're from, or it, it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't matter to me. God, God created us in the image of himself. And, and, and it is, it is in my purpose on this planet to just love everyone, serve everyone, you know, just be available to everyone. And when you have that in your heart, it's easy to connect. It's easy because you feel that, you know, it's like, you know, you talk about like a, um, a, a mother, baby, a mother, child connection. Um, there's no, you know, the baby doesn't understand a word that, that, that woman is saying, but that baby feels it, it innately. There's that connection. And you, and, and as human beings, we have that, we have that ability to connect with people without words, it, but it has to start from the inside. It has to resonate. It's a vibration. You know, it, it just is. It's a vibration. You can walk into the room and you can feel vibrations, you know, and, and, and but the problem is, our educated brain gets in the way and, 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 and interferes with that human to human connection. This is why I'm able to see as many as I'm able to see. Here's the thing, Tommy, I got patients that drive two and a half, three hours, one way they're in and out of my office in 60 seconds, one minute. You think about driving three hours and getting an adjustment in a second, 60 seconds in and out. And those people go back to church. They refer their whole families. They refer to church families. They bring me gifts. They tell me how much they love me. Why? I'm only spending a minute with them. It's not the it's not the quantity. It's the quality of that time. And that and that quality that quality comes from my internal vibration, my true intention, my true passion for that human being. That's how you connect. And then when your words, when you speak, they're genuine. They're honest. I care about you. That's not a. That's not just a statement. That's not something that's superficial that I just said to hope that they'll send me a new patient. When I tell somebody I care about them, I care about them. Every time a patient leaves my office, I always say, let me know if there's anything I can do for you. If, if I had a patient that was 80 years old and said, I need my yard mowed, I would go find somebody to pay them to go mow her yard. I, without a, with, I mean, I wouldn't even think twice about it. I mean, that's, that's what I'm talking about. The way you connect is you have to generally want to connect you've got to understand meet them where they are love them enough to respect them enough to deliver what that you said you were going to deliver but just be open enough to accept that they know that you care about them that's and it, that's how you connect it's hard to articulate but you know it is it isn't anything that you can study in school it's an inside job connecting to another human being is an inside job it's like when you know and i say this a lot when you know when think about when you were dating right when when, when you when you and sarah were dating when you guys first met and you have that wow, that wow factor. You didn't have a, a sheet underneath your table with scripts to try to remember what to say to her, right? <laughs> you, you, you know, you didn't have that. So a lot of chiropractors use scripts. I, I don't like scripts, man, because here's the thing. You weren't talking at Sarah. You were speaking with Sarah. You were sharing your heart. You were, you were showing her who you were as a human being. And she responded back and she showed you. And look what a beautiful relationship you guys have. Well, that's the same thing with your patients. If you want to have that beautiful relationship, you've got to allow them to see who you are. You've got to show them the type of person you are. They don't care what you say until they understand how much you care. And when they understand how much you care, you don't have to say anything. That's this. That's how you connect. I hope that I hope that I hope that I articulated that appropriately. It's, but that, it's that's so the best good. way I can explain it. You, and you did. And you're right. A lot of it is 
unwritten or unspoken and um that connection is really interesting you know when you if you ask a patient you know how long they spend with you a lot of them do and i'm, I'm similar to you time frames i spend with patients and they'll often say oh that 10 minutes was was great and you're like well, it was 30 seconds but when you connect time stands still absolutely and i, think I have that all i have that happen all the time people will will say no he spends you know three four five minutes with me and i just smile and say, you know it's it's literally a minute but it, again time just like you said time stands still i think i've got so much from today and i've, I've scribbled notes and i'm going to watch this back over and um it's it's really added a lot of value for me and and highlighted some areas that you know we get caught up in things and we sometimes forget and we sometimes lose track and it's it's really important to connect with people like you so i really do appreciate that and if if our audience want to connect with you more and find out more about you and, and share some of your wisdom where can they go to find out more well it's really easy you know i'm i'm on facebook i get i get messages all over the world literally um in my coaching group we have 28 different countries that i'm working with now it's just it's insane how fast it's growing it's word of mouth and then on Facebook, but uh, an easy way is, you know, my website is focus, like the, like the word focus, OKC, um, focusokc.com. If you just go to focusokc.com, that's, that's my website. There's, you know, there's videos, there's training videos, there's about anything you need to know. But, and then my, my email address is, is movingbones at yahoo.com, M-V-N-B-O-N-Z at yahoo.com. So you can, you can email me, you can find me on Messenger, on Facebook, go to focusokc.com. I'm easy to get a hold of. And here's the thing. I'm one of those guys, if you reach out to me, I will always get back to you. I, I get up early in the morning and I get my phone and I start answering messages. Um, I, I will never, ever not answer back or respond or go out of my way um, to help anyone. And so I'm, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of, but that's just, that's the, probably the easiest way. We'll definitely put some answers to that. Uh, well, the links to that in the show notes. And I will, I will agree and, and vouch for what you've said there. You really do. Um, no matter who reaches out, you reach back. And I, I think that's brilliant. It's not about how high up the ladder you climb. It's how far down you extend your hand to help others. And exactly. if you have any words of wisdom or piece of advice you'd like to leave our audience with today, Tim. Yeah, you know what? Um, this is, you know, I'll, I'll leave with this. This is what I want everybody just to, I hope you write, I hope everybody writes this down and then I want you to write this below it. So I'm going to, I'm going to repeat Dr. Gibson's quote, your chiropractic adjustment is your signature. It defines who you are as a chiropractor. And then my last thing I'm going to ask, how do you want to be defined? That's the question you got to ask yourself. So I will leave you all with that. Dr. Tim, thank you ever so much for joining us on the show today. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, and I hope people will um, share this with absolutely everybody who needs to hear it. And, and thanks for joining us today. I, I'm honored and I'm here to serve if I can help anybody. Thank you.